Good evening, church. Loving the fellowship out there. Let's stand. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. Welcome to our Wednesday night communion service. Um, and we had a blessed time in the Lord on Sunday, didn't we? Amen. I, I, I need to do it one more time. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. That's why we're here. Amen. So let us go to the throne of grace. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you again for life, health, and strength. And the many blessings you have stored upon us, Father God, Lord. Um, we're here to meet with you tonight, Father God, for your communion that you, um, that you allow us to do, Father God. And it's just remembrance of you. You went and died on that cross for us, Father God, and you bled and died on Calvary for us, Father God. So we take the elements to uh, just to remember you. Remember what you've done for us, Father God, and, and that's nothing we should be taking lightly, Father God. This is something that we, we get to do, Father God, and, um, and we get to worship you, and we get to hear what the Word says to strengthen us and grow us, Father God, in you more, more and more and deeper and deeper each and every day, Father. So, Lord, um, bless your people, Father God. Lord, this is your time, so remove all the distractions and that might be hindering us, Father God, and just, we lay those at your feet right now, Father God, and uh, Lord, be with our pastor, Father God, I know he's tired, but Father God, just give him that rest that he needs, Father God, and just, um, and just speak through him tonight, that's what we want, Father, we want to be changed by your words through him, uh, bless our worship time right now, Father God, uh, let us worship you right now in spirit and in truth, Father God, and let us just praise you to the highest, because you are deserving of it all. We love you, and we give you all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church says, amen. amen. Let's worship.
it out again. Church, chains be broken. guys can have a seat as we continue in the heart of worship. Light of my darkness. darkness. All my hope. my 
my hope. my hope foundation let's sing that again constant savior foundation. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting, waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won But you have never failed me yet 
Let's sing your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. I know the night won't last. I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again Jesus you're still enough Jesus you're still enough keep me within your love oh, my heart will sing your praise again your promise your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise, your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness, I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Church, can we stand? We're going to sing this together. The bridge says, I see you move. And you move mountains. And I believe I see you do it again. Amen. He's always moving mountains, isn't he? Let's sing this out. I see you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I see you do it again. You made a way. Where there is no way, and I believe I'll see you do it. I see you move, I see you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there is no way, and I believe I'll see you, I see you move. I see you move, you move the mountains, and I believe that see you do it again. You made a way where there is no way, and I believe I see, I see you move, I see you move, you move the mountains, and I believe. I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there is no way. And I believe I'll see you do it again. 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 Your promise still stands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me. 
church. Come on, church. Come on, John, John. It's my confidence. You never fail me. I'm still in your hands. Come on. I'm, I'm still, still in your hands. You believe that? This is my confidence. You never fail me. Yeah. I never will. I never will forget. You never failed me. You never failed me yet. I never will forget. I never will forget. Come on, clap those hands for Jesus, saints. Uh, come on, clap those hands like you mean it tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Say hi to your neighbor. Give somebody a squeeze. Say hi to somebody you don't know. How about that? You know what? Can we do that? Can I turn this around? Can I turn that around or it'll feedback? You think? Okay. You can get some sound in there. There you go. Let's give that a try. All right, church. Good evening. Good evening. Go ahead and take a seat. Go ahead and take your seat. Praise the Lord. Calvary Chapel, good evening. Clap your hands for Jesus. Somebody say amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm still reeling from Sunday. I literally am reeling from Sunday. Were you blessed on Sunday? I don't know if you were here for second service. But I was trying to muddle through. My hand was cramping. Were you here for second? Who was here for second service? Oh, that's a lot of y'all. Okay. I, got, I don't know what happened. I think it was spiritual warfare. But my hand locked up on me between first and second service. My fingers, I don't know what happened, but my fingers just locked up between services. So... Um, I mean, really, really super painful. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, yeah, like these fingers were going that way and these fingers were going that way. It was awful. So I just started praying. I didn't call. I didn't have anybody come to my office or nothing. I was like praying and I was like, I was seriously near tears, near tears. And I'm like, Lord, Jesus, please help me. And I, what did I do? I drank a lot of water. I was trying not to drink a lot of water because I had to preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I know when nature calls when you got to preach, but a lot of preachers don't want to drink a lot of water and stuff like that because they have to preach. And, you know, you don't want nature to call when you have to preach. Let the church say amen. amen. You don't want to do church finger right in the middle of for God so loved the world. And uh, so, yeah, so I, I come, you know, I greet people like I did greet people. And, and by the way, Danielle Sanders, John John's cousin, was so awesome. Y'all clap your hands. I just enjoyed, I enjoyed her so much. I enjoyed her so much. 
And uh, so I came and introduced her, and I told the people to pray for me. Obviously, I told them to pray for me. And uh, people just started yelling, eat mustard. <laughs> this is the weirdest church. <laughs> they started yelling, eat mustard, eat mustard. Like, right, you know. I'm like, really? Like, right in front of all these people, I'm really? They're like, yeah, go eat mustard, Get, go eat mustard. So I, well, clap your hands and welcome Daniel Sanders. And I'm like, I'm going to go eat mustard. So I go eat mustard. I come back out, and she's singing her song, and I come back in the sound booth, and Marquis got a spoon and a jar of mustard as well. <laughs> I'm like, how do you have all of these things? You're like MacGyver. Marquis is carries, he's got, he's like, here, I'm back there worshiping, and I like doing sound, so I just hang out with Jay in the sound booth, you know. Mark, I'm doing sound, and Marquis is like, here, eat this. I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing the sound. I mean, he must have, it actually did help. And then I, I get, later on in the daytime, I get texts from people that said, drink pickle juice. <laughs> Has anyone heard of pickle juice? Um, pickle juice, I guess it's the salt, as I'm ne now learning, because I'm, people are, you know, pickle juice, I, you know, it's all kinds of remedies, I guess, right? Pickle juice, but... And uh, so I, we went out to dinner. I could hardly eat. And Ms. Alvarez, we went to a nice little swanky restaurant. And I'm like, honey's feeding me food. And so, yeah, so I'm a little bit better today. But I tell you what, praise the Lord. God is good all the time. Oh, come on, say it like you mean it. God is good all the time. And I want to tell you, i tell you this one more thing. Easter sunrise service was absolutely, the Holy Spirit fell at Apex Community Park. It was just so beautiful. It was just really a really great Easter Sunday, wasn't it? And I, I mentioned it did feel like, like Israel. The weather, everything about it, Grandma Betty, wasn't it just like Israel? It was just a really beautiful day, so um, thank you everyone who made it possible. It was just a great day. Lots of servants. Um, uh, everyone helped out so much. The church was just beautiful. Um, I love these, these flowers growing out of the ceiling. Um, they, <laughs> they, everything is just was so beautiful, so thank you everyone, and Praise the Lord. God really showed up, and I'm so thankful. Come on, clap those hands and say amen. I'm not going to keep you long here tonight. I don't know if it's your first time with us on a Wednesday evening and uh, post-Easter uh, service, but we, on the first Wednesday of every month, we have our Easter, our Easter, I'm stuck on Easter, and uh, our communion service. And are you happy to be here tonight? Are you happy to be here tonight? Well, good. I'm happy to see you. And uh, we're just going to have a little time of fellowship, say amen, church, with the Lord and with each other, and we'll partake of communion. And uh, I want to read. I, I, tonight, I, you know, I tried today to just study, if you will, and I just felt like the Lord wasn't taking me down that path. Y'all know I'm a studier. I mean, I was here at, I don't know, 5 o'clock. I'm a studier. And I kept trying to study, 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 and I felt like the uh, Lord just wasn't taking me down that path today. So we're just going to read some post-resurrection accounts, like what was happening on Monday, and what was going on on Tuesday, and what was going on on Wednesday. And then next week, uh, 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 um, uh, Sunday, what was going on on Sunday, the, the following week, a week after Easter, I'm going to talk to you about that. It's special sermon on Sunday. And you know what else is happening on next Sunday? And you know what else? Uh, I'll wait while you clap your hands there. And, and you know what else? This particular baptism, let me tell you something. It's going to be so special. Ask me how. Because we're going to have water from the Jordan River in Israel in that water this coming Sunday. Now, y'all look mighty perplexed. 
How so? Because I'm going to fly to Israel tomorrow morning, get some, and come back by Sunday. No, I'm not going to do that. So a brother emails me, texts me, and he says, Pastor Rodney, you're going to have a baptism on Sunday. He says, and on our last trip to Israel, this is so awesome. On our last trip to Israel, I bought some water back from the Jordan. He got baptized. And he said, I bought some water back from the Jordan. Would you like it to, he bought it back in a Deer Park bottle. <laughs> Say amen. amen. It's all right. Amen. And he bought it back in a Deer And he said, he sent me a, he sent me a picture of it. And he said, would you like it? He said, you can, he said, would you like it to just pour it into the, into the pool? And I said, man, I jumped up. I said, that'd be so awesome. Would you be willing? He said, I absolutely would. And I thought that's so special. We've never done that here. It's so special. And so if you're getting baptized on Sunday, you are effectively getting baptized in water from the Jordan. Two people can clap your hands and say amen there. Two people can clap in. So I'm excited about that. If you're getting baptized on Sunday, it's going to be very, very, very special. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. And if you have been on the fence about getting baptized, Sunday is the time to do it, all right? And uh, I'm going to encourage you. I always tell you that uh, it is always my uh, blessing, my privilege. It is a privilege for a pastor to be uh, involved in some of these uh, momentous occasions in the life of people, uh, weddings, funerals, uh, baptisms, baby births, those kinds of things. I do uh, count it an honor to do that, so uh, I would be honored to baptize you. You need to go to the website. My voice is, I've been preaching a lot, talking a lot. Um, you need to go to the website and uh, sign up, okay? Let's do this together. And even if you're not being baptized, plan to stay or come back, if you will. If you're going to first service, come back. And uh, let's uh, rejoice together with the body of Christ. Say, say amen. Let's rejoice together. Come on back, and we're going to worship. And baptisms are just a beautiful, beautiful outward sign of what? And then with reality, it's scheduled Sunday, April the 7th, after second service. You know that approximately at 1 p.m. And uh, please go to the website and sign up and plan to attend this Saturday at 10 a.m. at um, uh, April the 6th in the Youth Ministry Building. Pastor Larry will meet you there, tell you just a few things of things that you need to know prior to getting baptized and uh, things you need to wear, and there's some order things. We won't keep you longer than 30 minutes. I think it is 30, about 30 minutes you keep it real quick. Pastor Larry talked quick, and uh, he ain't one of them long-winded preachers like me. Don't you say amen, all right? And he'll uh, get you situated, all right? Gentlemen, this coming Saturday, talking about this Saturday, gentlemen, make some noise. You already know, Saturday, April 6th, the men's breakfast. 7.30 a.m. in the Youth Ministry Building in the Men's Bible Study. We'll meet on the second and fourth Tuesday for the month of April. And in May, the study will return to the first and third Tuesday. And I've been talking to you about the Seder Feast, correct? Chosen Ministry Ministries is presenting Messiah in the Passover Seder Feast. And that's going to be Saturday, April the 13th at 6 p.m. Catering by Design has been hired to cater the banquet. And the menu is posted online. We must submit our final, are you listening to me? Our final meal choices and numbers to the caterer on Tuesday. Reserve your seat tonight. Tickets are available for purchase online. It's $30 each person, best $30 you ever spent. Thank you for your support. We certainly do appreciate that. Continue to do so, saints. We uh, are uh, doing the work of the ministry. Say amen, church. And we thank you for your financial support. You can continue to give many ways here at Calvary Chapel. Certainly do appreciate that. And go ahead and silence your cell phone. Father, we love you tonight. And we thank you for your great love toward us. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus. Are you praying with me right now? 
Thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. And Lord, just in these next few moments, we thank you, Lord, that uh, post-resurrection, we thank you that Jesus didn't stay dead, that he rose from the grave. And Lord, not only did he claim to have risen from the grave, but he showed himself to many, many, many witnesses, Lord, that there be no doubt. Are you praying with me tonight? There'd be no doubt that Jesus rose from the grave, and we thank you for that. There's proof beyond a shadow of a doubt. Eyewitnesses that Christ is risen indeed, and we thank you for that. Now, Lord, in these next few moments, Lord, just uh, be glorified. Thank you for the body that was broken, the blood that was shed, and for this communion service tonight. Remembering you, in Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people, come on, clap those hands one last time and say amen. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, and we're talking about, we're reading about, we're just going to read tonight. Just nice and easy. Everything's nice and easy. Luke chapter 24, and uh, we're reading Luke, and then we'll read, I don't know, we'll see what happens. Luke chapter 24. And we're talking about post-resurrection as we are off the heels of uh, Easter service. Jesus is risen. He is what, saints? You already know. Luke chapter 24. Let's see what we're going to pick up tonight. Luke chapter 24, and let's pick up in um, verse 13. Luke chapter 24 and verse 13. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day. Are you looking at verse 13? Say amen. amen. And again, we'll just read. I may have some comments. We'll see what happens. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to the village of Emmaus which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together. <clears throat> Jay, uh, a bottle of water, please. Thank you. And they talked together of all things which had happened, so it was, while they conversed and reasoned, that Jesus himself drew near and he went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation, thank you, is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? And then one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Now, now y'all understand that Jesus is, amen, amen. Uh, y'all understand that Jesus is post-resurrected, right? He's risen in his glorified body. So the one whose name was Cleophas answered and said, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem and you have not known the things which have happened there in these days? And he said to them, what things? See, Jesus has a sense of humor, doesn't he? See, for some of y'all fuddy-duddies, <laughs> some Christians don't like to laugh. Jesus loved to laugh. He knew what was going on. He's just playing with them. He said to them, what things? And they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and the rulers... Now, y'all get this. They're telling Jesus about Jesus. I love it. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified. But we were hoping hmm, that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since the things happened. Yes, and... Certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us when they did not find his body. And they came saying that they had seen, also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And certain of those who were 
with us went to the tomb and they found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all the prophets have spoken, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into glory and beginning, you look at verse 27, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning who saints himself. They're telling Jesus about Jesus. And then they drew near to the village where they were going. And he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him saying, stay with us. For it is toward evening and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them. He took bread. He blessed it. And he broke it as he's known to do. And he gave it to them. Jesus is always having communion. You see, because you can have communion any time. You don't have to have communion the first Wednesday of every month. At 7 p.m. at Calvary Chapel, you understand. You can have communion any time. You can have communion every day if you like. You can have communion in the morning, in the evening. You can have it any time you want. Jesus sat down, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. And then, and then, their eyes were opened. And then, they knew him. And what happened? And they said to one another, I love verse 32. Come on, read it with me. Did not our hearts burn within us when we talked with him on the road and while he opened up the scriptures? Isn't that what happens when Christians read the Bible? Isn't that what happens when, when you read the Bible and, you're, and, and, and the Holy Spirit begins to minister to you or God begins to minister to you or Jesus begins to minister to you? Your heart starts to burn. Your heart burns within you. When the scriptures are open, and so they rose up that very hour, and they returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, the Lord is risen indeed, and he appeared to Simon, and they told about the things that had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. See, they knew him in communion. Come on, somebody. See, this is why I tell you often. I tell you often. I wonder if you're hearing me. Communion is important. A lot of times Christians, you know, sometimes, I feel that way sometimes, where, you know, we're, we're, you know, we feel like we're not, you know, growing. Or we feel like we're not, like, progressing as believers. We feel like we're not really... Um, you know, we get, we get too plateaued sometimes. It's, it's natural. Where we feel like, you know, we get meh. You know, your Christianity feels meh. It happens. You know, it, you know the, the, the whole supernatural high type thing, when you first became a Christian, you felt like, woo, you know. I know I did. When I first became a Christian, man, I, felt, I was blast off. I was spiritually blast off. <laughs> I mean, you, could, you couldn't even keep me held down, you know. You couldn't nail me down. And then after a while, you know, you start kind of, you know, leveling off. And, 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 and sometime in our Christian life, we just start feeling like, you know, it's just, you know, everything is just kind of steady. And it's not like I'm growing. And, and maybe even something is missing. It's in this element of communion that really, really adds that, 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 that extra um, um, that extra spiritual element that we need to bolster. Um, I'm, I'm missing the words that I'm looking for. Uh, that extra spiritual oomph. That's the best I can do tonight. Okay, get over it, okay? 
something that we need as believers just to give us that extra little something to push us forward. It's in the communion element. He was known to them in the breaking of bread. We get a spiritual um, insight, a spiritual um, boost, if you will, a spiritual strengthening, if you will. God help me. A spiritual, a spiritual um, um, a fortitude, if you will, from communion. Because it's that connection and communion that really just kind of links us. That there's a oneness and a unity in communion. Because that's what it's all about, really. The word communion itself means oneness. Y'all still listening to me? It means unity. The word communion, koinonia, communion, unity, it means fellowship, oneness, all the same word. We come into oneness in communion. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. God wants us to come into oneness with him when we partake of communion. That's the whole point. The whole point is to remember him, is to snap back, stop what you're doing, stop, and remember him. Look back, what he's done. Look forward, he's coming again, and look at your present situation. I need to be in fellowship and unity with the Lord right now. Thank you, Lord. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. So, he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Now, verse 36. As they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and he said to them, what do he say, y'all? Peace to you. But they were terrified. Now, here we are with the disciples up in the upper room, and they were terrified. They were frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Well, I can't blame them. I mean, they're up in the upper room talking, and all of a sudden, Jesus comes walking through the wall. He didn't knock on the door, ring the doorbell, and there was no ring. Let the church say amen. He just kind of showed up. They're like, whoa. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do you doubt? And why does doubt rise in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet. That it is I myself. Somebody once said the only man-made thing in heaven will be the nail-scarred hands and his feet. Interesting. Why are you troubled and why do you, why, why do doubts arise in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Touch me, handle me, see for yourself. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he has said this, He showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe for joy and marvel, he said to them, have you any food? Jesus probably (laughs) Jesus said, okay, you don't believe my hands, you don't believe my feet. Let me just go one step further. Give me something to eat. Now, perhaps if I eat some food, you'll believe it's me. Which, by the way, 1 John writes his first John, John writes first, second, and third John to refute the Gnostic heresy in regard to this. Because there was a heresy going around that said Jesus, when he rose from the grave, that he really didn't rise physically, that he rose as a spirit, and he really didn't walk. When he walked, on the, when he, walked he didn't leave footprints because he was only a spirit. So he didn't leave footprints. And when he ate, he really didn't chew and masticate that he actually just, he just kind of just acted like he ate. But he really didn't eat anything. And when he drank water, he really didn't drink anything because he was just a spirit. So John, John writes and says, that which we have seen and heard and we have handled with our own hands the word of life. 
church. I said, uh-uh. The Gnostic heresy is a lie. Because I was in the upper room, and Jesus walked right through the door and said, well, here's my hands, here's my feet, and uh, y'all still don't believe me? Well, then give me something to eat. And so they gave him, in verse 42, a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it. And what did he do, y'all? For proof. He didn't take a to-go box. Because that wouldn't have been, been quite the same proof. He wouldn't have been the same. He could have took a to-go box, and they would have thought, well, I didn't see it. And he took a to-go box. I didn't see him eat it. Oh, no, he ate it in there. What? And then he said to them, to them. These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all these things must be fulfilled, which was written in the law and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding, he, because any understanding of the scriptures and any understanding concerning Jesus comes from the Holy Spirit, comes from Jesus. Somebody say amen. So he opened their understanding. No preacher can open your understanding. No man can open your understanding. Anything you learn, you learn it from God. Pastor Rodney, Pastor Ralph, Pastor Tim, Pastor Ian, Scott, anybody up here teaching you, when you learn something, you didn't learn it from them. They were just a conduit. That's it. That's it. They didn't teach you anything. Oh, Pastor Ryan, I learned so much from you. Well, I get it. I understand what you mean. And I praise God that I was a conduit by which I could be open enough for the Holy Spirit to speak through me, to speak to you. But I didn't really teach you anything. Anything you learned, you learned it from the Holy Spirit. All right. He opened their understanding. Look at verse 45. Not me. He opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And then he said to them, thus it is written and thus it is necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all generations, to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Come on, read verse 49 with me. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And now it came to pass, when he had blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Now, verse 9. Acts 1, verse 9. Now, when he had spoken these things, verse 9, while they watched, Acts 1, 9, while they watched, he was taken up we pick right up from Luke 24, 50. A cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two angels, two men, by them in white apparel, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him 
go up into heaven. The same Jesus who went up into heaven will come back in like manner as you saw him go up. In other words, the same Jesus who went up is the same Jesus who's going to come down. Anybody glad about that? Now, now, then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of called Olivet, which is near, where, saints? If you've been to Israel with me, you know that. It's a Sabbath day journey. And when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. And they all continued with one accord. And what were they doing? Prayer and supplication with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brother James. So Mary is waiting on the Holy Spirit because Jesus told them in Luke 24, 50, that they were to go to Jerusalem and wait for the power of the Holy Spirit. So they're waiting. For the Spirit of God. And when the day of Pentecost had fully come in verse 2, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then Peter then preaches in verse 14 of chapter 2, and then he preaches in chapter 3, and now the church is born. This is the beginning of the church. And now, from Acts chapter 2 until today, we are to continue in what Jesus has laid the foundation for the church to include communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, turn with me. Worship worship team, please. Worship team. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Oh, we had other accounts to read, but now I'm out of time now, so. You can read John 21 if you like, on your own time. I was going to read that with you if we're out of time. 1 Corinthians 11. So we continue. Jesus laid the foundation for communion. He says, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me, and we're to continue to do communion until he comes. Amen? And then Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 11, I've received from the Lord in verse 23. That which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took the cup. On the same night he took the bread, pardon me. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner is guilty, will be guilty, of the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a man examine himself, and let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many are asleep. For if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So, Lord, we thank you 
for your body that was broken. We thank you, Lord, first of all, again. Lord, that you rose from the grave, that you showed yourself to many witnesses. Lord, that you showed yourself to the disciples. You showed yourself on the road to Emmaus and to those, um, Lord, you proved yourself alive, and we thank you for that. We love you, God. Lord, even on the the week after Easter, God, many, Lord, have come to church on Easter Sunday, and they were all excited about what you've done. Lord, we are excited the week after, and the week after that, and the week after that, and, and every week, somebody say amen. We're excited every week because God is good. God has been good, and we thank you for that. And we look forward to the same Jesus that ascended. We look forward to the same Jesus is coming back someday. And Lord, even as we sit at the table and we sit with this cup in our hand, we remember you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for your body that was broken. Lord, even before we partake of this bread, we ask you, God, to forgive us of our sins. Your body was broken, Lord. Should have been us. You died in our place. So forgive us, Lord. Lord, sins that, Lord, even things that we have are guilty of, Lord, maybe we don't even know about, Lord. Things that we, Lord, are just even things that are unknown to us, God. Lord, just forgive us, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy that covers us, Lord. Your mercy new every morning. Thank you, Jesus. So we remember you. You tell us, Lord, to, Lord, as we partake of this bread, to remember you. So, Lord, as we partake, we remember you. Let's partake together. Thank you, God. And Lord, for the cup. Thank you, Lord, for the blood. This cup representing your blood. Though our sin be red as crimson, Isaiah tells us, you wash us white as snow. So we thank you for the blood that was shed for us. This blood, your blood will never lose its power. We thank you for that, Lord. We remember you in Jesus' name. Let's partake together. Thank you, God. Let's worship. We'll just we'll sing one song. I'll pray and we'll dismiss. Yo 
salvation with fear and trembling your way born as my own as Christ is born to me tonight God we thank you so much for your presence here tonight thank you for this communion table Lord you have been so so good to us can you clap your hands right there you've been so so good to us Lord by the very fact that you rose from the grave God you've been so so good to us we thank you for that now Lord as we leave this place, never your sight. Go with us, God. Take us home safely. Give us a good night's rest, God. Bring us back, Lord, at the appointed time on Sunday morning, ready to enter into the house of the Lord with joy and gladness. Happy to be in the presence of God. Happy to wake up and be able to worship the Lord just one more time. Because you are. So, so good. 
to. Can you lift your hands to the Lord right here? You've been so, so good. Come on, lift your voice. Come on. You've been. Come on, lift your voice just a little nicer. Come on. Oh, tooth. If not for you. If not for you. Come on, sing it one more again. You've been so, so good. Come on, team, help us. Come on. To think where I would be. Where I would be. If not for you, God. If not for you, God. Come on, every voice, just sing it one more time. You've been so, so good. So, so to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been so, so to think where I would be. Oh, to think where I would be. If not for you, if not for you. Come on, every voice. Come on, every voice. You've been, you've been so, so good to me. Oh, uh, can I get y'all to just slip your hands up to God just right here? Come on. So, so good to me. To think where I would be if not for you, if not for you. Amen, amen. Come on, clap those hands and say amen. I'll see you Sunday morning. Good to see you tonight. Good night. Be safe. Get home. We'll see you Sunday.